everybody doing a little update here I thought I would share this project because I have no idea what it's going to do something that I've been wanting to do uh, in the new year I'm probably not going to get much of it done this year but next year I really want to focus on I cannot do this one-handed hold on I'm glad this is not a formal video one thing I want to do next year is make better use of the tools that I have. And one thing that I feel I really underutilize is my silhouette. So I have the Cameo 3 and I've got a couple new things for it. I got the pen holder. It's got a Signo pen in it. And then I have the deep cut blade. And I'm going to be putting a piece of craft foam on here and I'm going to attempt to make a mask for Rune. And the mask that I made is for uh, a ballroom or a ballroom event in the books. And it's supposed to look like a snake head and I really didn't want to try to draw the scales by myself so Instead, I made this and I'm going to attempt to cut it and also have the silhouette draw all those tiny scales. The only catch really is that I can zoom in, you'll see. There's some empty space in between and since I don't have the designer edition, I can't fill those in. So. The idea is that it'll draw the outline and then I can come back and color in the spaces in between. That's the idea anyway, we'll see how it works. It has some presets for craft foam, so that's what I've set up and hopefully that's going to work. Okay, machine is loaded. Let's send this to the machine and we will see if it works. going to do first. Okay, it's drawing first. So it kind of is working, but it also is really dragging the pen in between and not laying down as much color as I hoped it would. I think a marker might work better, but I don't have any markers. I guess if it indents with the pen, I can always go back over it with paint because then I'll have outlines, but man, I was really hoping that this would work out the way it was in my head where I could just have the pen draw the gold ink on there for me. Lots of extra craft foam, which is covered in dog hair, so I can redo this a couple times if I need to. It seems like right now the biggest obstacle is it presses down a lot farther than it should, so I need to figure out how to raise the blade carriage up a little bit. I guess just raise up the pin a little bit before I clamp it in there so that it doesn't push so hard down into the foam because that's kind of distorting what's there. I feel like it was a good idea, but it's not quite doing what it was supposed to do. Okay, so I think I put the deep cut blade in wrong somehow because it didn't cut anything. Like there's... The, that line there is just where it drew the edge. There is no cut. Okay, so the next step is figuring out what went wrong. So I looked at the deep cut blade and it wasn't seated deep enough. So that is part of the problem. And then it was also in, I think, backwards. So that's the other part. For this, I thought maybe that the gel pen wasn't drawing on the black foam. But after I do a couple of bits by hand, it looks like it works just fine. So I think it's just too much pressure and that wasn't letting the ink flow. Because when I just like really lightly sketch along the edges, 
it lays down just fine. So I think the first thing that we're going to have to do is try to figure out how to increase the space between the tip of the pen and the foam because right now it's just too low down. This here, but I've pulled this up. I pulled this up a little bit. This is about the width of the foam. So the idea is that if it's sitting just right on top of the foam, then it should have a better chance of drawing instead of mashing down into it. The embossing effect is really cool, but it's not what I'm going for. So another little revision that I made is I moved these here, which are like the feed spinny thingies. I don't know what they're called. Kind of like feed dogs in a sewing machine. I moved it over to the side so that it wouldn't leave any tracks on the mask because on this one, there's a line right over here where that spring was revving over and over again. Round two. I don't know if it's doing anything. Well, it's still pushing in, but it doesn't look like it's mangling foam like it was before, so this may work better. I'll still have to go over it by hand to get the lines to show up like I want, but as long as it's not mashed to oblivion, that should really help. Okay, so round two, it looks like it cut this time, and it didn't really draw the ink on there, but the texture is amazing. That looks incredible. I think if I do like an ink wash over the top, maybe that'll work. Or I can just sit there and draw all of those little scales by hand, but I'm really impressed with how this one came out. The deep cut blade worked that time too. This is the hard part is getting it off. Wow. That looks awesome. So ink by machine didn't work out, but ink by hand looks like it will. As long as I'm gentle, it does show up. This part right here is going to be a slit for the nose so that it sits a little flatter against his face. Got my messengers on in the background if you hear any beeps. I've got a heater on too since fall just decided to make its appearance and it's actually pretty cold here. I'm not doing an amazing job with this but I don't think it needs to be perfect. It just has to look good. The biggest thing is just getting it on. I think if the ink is on there, then the idea shows. So in the books, they are invited to celebrate the solstice in the summer at the palace. It's a very special and unique event for mages, but it's a really important opportunity for for all. So getting there to ask questions of the mages who are going to be in attendance is a really important thing for for all and a big part of her story. It's kind of the, the driving motivation for a lot of her part in the story. I made her mask already and I've shared it in the past. It's kind of fiery looking. 
but Rin just has to be extra, so his mask is a snake's head. That's what we were going for, at least. And in the book, I describe it as having every scale edged in gold. I think it's going to take me a while to edge every scale in gold, but having them clearly outlined definitely is going to make this easier on me. I had hoped that it would just draw the scales on just like this so that I wouldn't have to do it by hand. And worst of all, it's like as it soaks into the foam, I'll have to go over parts of it twice. It's not too bad. I won't be able to work on it for too long because I'll have to go pick Evie up from school before too long. And today I am filming of course on Halloween. You'll be seeing this in a couple of days after I have a chance to get all the footage off my phone and put it all together. Hopefully all of you have had a good Halloween. I usually look forward to it. When I was a kid, Halloween was always my favorite because there was nothing better than putting on a costume and going and getting a bunch of free candy. But as I get older, mostly it just becomes stressful because now I have to make costumes. It was a lot easier when my mom was in charge of that. This year, Evie asked to be a Darkling from Dokopan Kingdom, which is kind of an unusual game, but it's one that we bought a long time before she was born, and she is just absolutely in love with that game. Last year, she was Skull Kid from Majora's Mask, so... I think she just likes having an unusual costume. It's harder to tell what's going on with the scales on the edges, because that is where the cutting blade pressed. I'm really happy with how this cut the foam though, and that's good because that means it's going to work well for another project that I plan to use it for. Not right away, because I have enough projects going on, but bit by bit I'm clearing off my list of things that I've wanted to do. I've wanted to do this one for several years. So between this and finally working with silk and using dough suede for the boots, I feel like I'm finally really moving ahead on things that I've intended to do, but haven't necessarily gotten done yet. I'm going to have to seal this. just to keep the ink from rubbing off. But the longer I do this, the more I wonder if it would be better to go over it with 
acrylic paint instead. I've got some gold Liquitex, and I've also got gold in the uh, Martha Stewart craft acrylics, which are the most amazing craft acrylics and one of the best craft metallic paints that I've seen. It may be a little bit more opaque if I use an acrylic. Because as nice as this is, it's unfortunately really soaking into the foam a lot more than I expected it would. It's really bright and shiny when it first goes on here. But then, like these parts here that I did first, they've really dulled down a lot. So a lot of the pigment must be sucking into the foam. I'm looking at the clock though, and I'm almost out of time, so I'm not going to finish this in this sitting. So in just a second here, I'm going to go, I'm going to finish this little section of the forehead at least. And that's probably good enough for now. So yeah, I guess this experiment was kind of halfway a success. The ink on the foam did not work with the silhouette at all. But it did end up embossing it really nicely. So embossed and cut foam with the machine that definitely opens up a lot of new possibilities. When it comes to drawing on the foam, I might try a marker next time, and if not a marker, then I guess I'm just gonna have to go back and do some more brainstorming. But that's all for this time. See you again soon.